Hi, everyone. My name is Mike Riley. I'm the founder and editor of journalisttoolbox.ai. Welcome to another Journalist Toolbox training. Today, we're going to be talking about something we wish we didn't have to talk about, AI detection tools. Um, but before we get started on that, um, I wanted to introduce you to journalisttoolbox.ai website. Uh, hundreds of free resources up here uh, with AI tools uh, that you can just go in, open it up, and it has training videos built into it links and short descriptions of all these free and paid AI tools. Uh, and, uh, you know, take advantage of it. The site's free. We also have a newsletter uh, that comes out every other Tuesday morning that's free. Uh, donations are welcome uh, on uh, Substack. Uh, and it'll arrive in your uh, email uh, inbox right around 8 a.m. Central Time every other Tuesday. And uh, we have all kinds of tips and tricks and, you know, updates to some of the software and things like that. Um, so take advantage of that. We also have training videos here, of which you're watching one right now. Uh, on the right-hand side here, it says training videos. Uh, more than 100 uh, of these training videos uh, are up on this free uh, YouTube site, uh, and it covers everything from AI tools uh, to mapping tools, how to edit video on your phone, all kinds of different resources up here. So take advantage of these uh, uh, free resources. What we're going to talk about today is what you can find on Journalist Toolbox AI's homepage. We always have a page up here on AI and plagiarism detection tools. Uh, so if you find this page on uh, the website, oh, go ahead and open it up. We're going to talk about the first three tools on this page, GPT-0, Copy Leaks, and Winston AI. These are free AI detection tools. A couple of them have paid upgrades. Uh, but the free versions get pretty much what you need uh, done with them. Uh, I have some other tools down here as well. AI Detector Pro, Check4, which is a really good tool uh, as well, um, that are really good at detecting AI uh, written copy. So if a student maybe you have has uh, written a term paper or has written a news article uh, that doesn't look like it was maybe their work, uh, you can run it through the, the software to see if it was what percentage of it uh, sometimes 100% is has been written by uh, AI. So I'll go through these one by one, uh, starting with GPT-0 at the top. And you can just click on these as you go as well. Uh, and I've got a piece of, of AI writing uh, up here uh, that I wrote in chat GPT. Uh, I just put it together really quickly. Um, I wrote this little prompt, uh, write a news article about the 9-11 attacks in New York City, use detail on what happened uh, to the World Trade Center, uh, the Pentagon, and United 93. Uh, write it for all. Uh, uh, write it for a Chicago-based audience and follow AP style and journalistic style. Include any attribution in the story, which it didn't do. Um, didn't provide any links or anything either. But what's interesting here, and this is uh, being recorded in uh, late 2023, um, it puts this little disclaimer down at the bottom. This article is hist a historical reimagining uh, for the purpose of the user's request. It is not the actual news report uh, from the time of events. Uh, what's interesting about this uh, piece of HTML or uh, this uh, AI generated article is they put HTML into it. Uh, they boldface the subheads and they put emphasis on the little note at the end and H3 tag, which is a headline tag at the top here. So it actually coded it, uh, even though I didn't ask for it, but it did code it. And it put this disclaimer at the end, which it didn't, uh, uh, you know, I didn't ask for either. So uh, pretty interesting uh, little result here. Um, so I can copy this and, and you know, I'm just going to move it over or moved it over here to this uh, uh, Google Doc. Uh, I, I stripped the uh, HTML out of it, which could have been a clue to these uh, uh, AI tools that it was AI and the disclaimers down there. I did add in, it said insert uh, uh, news outlet here. So I put WGN TV news here in Chicago and I'm going to copy this and I'm going to move it into these uh tools and see how they do as far as detecting the AI. The first one I'm going to paste it into is GPT-0. And this is one of my favorite uh, tools. I use this one probably the most. And I've had a couple students that tried me this last semester uh, and, and I caught them uh, and ran it through, through here and, and it was an easy catch. Um, I always demo these tools the first day of class for the students to show them how I catch uh, uh, them cheating with AI. 
Uh, it's almost like, uh, you know, daring them to try me, uh, you know, a couple always do, but most of them, you know, pretty much do their own work. I do show them, you know, how to use some editing tools and things like that throughout the semester. You can upload a file down here. All of these have cut and paste capabilities, but you can also upload a, a PDF or a Word doc, your text file, anything like that. Um, and you can also select specifically, you know, GPT-4, Llama, or AI plus human. If you think it's all human, you know, uh, generated, you can check it for that. Um, I'm just going to leave them blank and just hit check origin here and see how much of a percentage it gives me. Sentences that are likely to be AI are highlighted, and it highlighted the whole thing. So it, it pretty much caught it. Some of these two will give uh, tools will give percentages. There's an 88% probability that this text was entirely written by AI. This is when you call the author in and sit down with them and say, hey, look, you know, uh, explain this to me. Uh, there's no attribution in it. You're not linking off to any uh, background resources. You're not quoting anything. This really looks to me like it was written by AI. Uh, and, you know, that that's their chance to confess. Uh, and I usually ding them really hard on the grade. They take a zero for the assignment. If they do it more than once, they take a zero for the class. Uh, and I did have a, a student uh, that did that this past semester. And, you know, it's just not worth it to, to risk it. So GPT-0 is a, a really good one. Uh, another good one uh, is copy leaks. Uh, copy leaks in the next tool I'll show you after this one, Winston, uh, both have uh, Chrome extensions that you can plug in and check uh, uh, actually on a website. Uh, you can highlight it and right click on it, uh, control click if you're on a Mac, uh, and it'll check uh, to the copy on right on the screen. And I'll demo it with, uh, uh, with uh, uh, Winston here in just a minute. But again, I just you know, uh, cut and pasted this in here. Uh, you can sign up for this for free. Um, there is a pricing model. Uh, you know, you can do some upgrades and things like that. Uh, and it'll, uh, you know, just check this little piece of text here. Uh, the higher priced uh, uh, models will have uh, uh, more. Um, this one got it wrong. It says this is human text. Um, and and it, it did get this one wrong. Uh, so they're not perfect. That's why, I, you know, show you three of them. You know, run it through two or three. And, you know, it's... Uh, uh, this one, you know, uh, copy leaks didn't get it right this time. This one's a, a, actually a really good one. I'm surprised it missed it, um, but uh, it it sure missed this one here. Let me try it as GPT-4. Um, yeah, here it ca caught it as GPT-4, so I had to select this. Let me try this chat GPT. Yeah, it caught it again. Um, but it did miss it when I just cut and pasted it, and, and uh, it thought it was human text. So this one, if you select it, it's going to, uh, you know, check it for, you know, Bard. Let's see if it checks for Bard. Yeah, at least it nailed it for the AI. It wasn't created in Bard, but it caught the AI. AI plus human um, caught it again. So it detects the AI. Uh, this one, when you just leave it blank, uh, apparently miss, misses it. So, you know, be careful, you know, run it through the, the multiple tabs. It's not like GPT-0 uh, where you can just, you know, not have any of them selected and it catches it. Um, so copy leaks is a little more picky about that. Um, yeah, the pricing's up here. You know, if you're going to use this a lot, you know, if you want plagiarism detection with it as well, it's 14 bucks a month. I use turnitin.com for plagiarism. I don't use turnitin.com for AI. AI, it's uh, at that. Um, but, uh, you know, uh, if you need, you're using this tool quite a bit, and hopefully you're not, uh, there are paid versions of this ranging from eight to $14 per month, which is, you know, pretty reasonable. You know, see if your department chair will pick it up. <laughs> Good luck with that. Um, and this last one I want to show you is Winston, Winston AI. Um, Winston, like CopyLeaks, has a browser plugin um, that when you go to the homepage and sign up, you have to sign up uh, you know, with your Gmail or something like that. Uh, it gives you the option uh, of downloading the Chrome extension, and it gives you these instructions on how to set it up. It's like four pretty easy steps. Uh, and once it's installed, you, know, you have to go in and you have to activate it. It's this little W up here. Uh, and as long as you're logged into it, um, uh, and it is, it's, it's, it gives me my credit available. Um, you can buy more credits, but the, you know, the ones I've got in there, you know, uh, cover me on just about anything I'm working on. Um, and I can go into a page and, and, uh, select it, uh, select, uh, I think you have to minimum of 500 characters, uh, and, uh, you can highlight it and control click on it. Uh, and it will give you a uh, scan for AI content and run it through. And, you know, this isn't, so it'd come back negative. But that's how you would do it in a web page if it's actually published work uh, or if it's up as some type of Google Doc, you know, you could go through and scan it 
uh, that way. So uh, that's one option. The other option is just to go into Winston itself. Uh, and uh, again, it's got an upload uh, uh, version to it where you can upload up here in the upper uh, left corner, um, or you can do a, just a regular text scan. Uh, it's nice here, you can uh, label it, which I really like, 911 story check. Uh, this is nice if you have to go back to it and reference it later. Uh, always do screen grabs of these as well, as well as the student work in case they take it down if it's been published. Um, it does have a, a plagiarism checker on there. I've got AI turned on right now. Um, it does have uh, you know, various versions in here. There's an earlier version of Winston. Uh, I go with the more current one, which is currently 3.0. Uh, and we'll scan it. We'll see how it does here. It's fun to kind of uh, check these. Oh, my trials ended. Um, it only gave me like four uh, free ones. So uh, I've got to go in. Uh, the other thing, too, is you can create other uh, uh, checks uh, with uh, or other accounts uh, with other email addresses. Uh, and again, uh, $12 a month. Uh, the advanced goes up, which gives you some more uh, uh, support, you know, larger scans and things like that. 80,000 word scan at $12 a month. It goes all the way up to 32 bucks a month. But uh, uh, darn it, I was hoping to be able to show you uh, how Winston works. Uh, uh, but I've run out of credits, uh, unfortunately, uh, on the desktop version. Uh, but uh, it, I do have uh, credits uh, still left on my uh, Chrome extension. So... Um, uh, that's uh, the three tools, GPT-0, uh, Copy Leaks, uh, and Winston, uh, which are three pretty good ones. Um, and uh, there's others that I'll be adding to this page here uh, in the coming weeks and months. So just a reminder, journalisttoolbox.ai, uh, great little tool, great resource uh, for you to find all kinds of uh, useful AI tools uh, that uh, are both free and paid, uh, tools that are useful for journalists, anyone doing research, um, remember to fact check everything. If you're uh, creating uh, uh, graphics, be sure to label them as a, that they're AI generated photo illustrations. Very, very important. Um, and also check into the tool a little bit. I, I do that as well before I post them here, uh, just to make sure you know many um, of these are uh, tools uh, you know are being trained on on copyright material, and that's a big issue right now. Uh, so you know make sure uh, that you're using a tool ethically uh, and sharing it with your students on how to use it ethically. That's all for now. We'll see you on the next video.